T minus is here at the Blap House uh, for the first ever Ill Mind Put the Loop on podcast episode in VR. Um, guys, show love to my boy T minus, one of the greats, one of the goats. Let's go, clap it up, clap it up. Yeah, hey, <laughs> yo T, up, if you want to. If you want to jump, just hit the space bar and you'll jump. Oh, up yeah, and down. I already know, yeah, bro. There you go. <laughs> I, I know how to clap and everything, but I'm in this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so for, first of all, I'd want to say, like, what, 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 every time I talk to you, like, you're always going on like a run. You know what I mean? Like, I remember the last episode we did in real life uh, was like three years ago, maybe. And you were already, like, obviously on a run and, you know, three years later you're on another run um i just want to say man like i i think it's super super amazing and inspiring to um see you do all that stuff and set an example for all of us and uh, i just want to give you your flowers man and say you know keep keep leading the charge man thank you bro i mean yo you know what's funny like i don't even i don't even think i'm really on a run personally i just like i'm just trying to be consistent as possible And, and you know how the game is right like there's a lot of guys that come in the game and, and they really only have like two years in them. You know what I'm saying? Half the time, two, three years. And it's like, it's, it's, it's a, it's a tough industry, bro. Like it's hard to just stay inspired and like keep evolving with the time. You know what I mean? Cause hip hop is changing, bro. Like every two to three years, dude, it's, it's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. absolutely right. I mean, you know, I, I kind of look at, you know, guys like you and like, wonder and and just everyone who's been around for like more than 10 years or at least 10 years yeah and and it really is just like exactly what you said it's like if you can go past two years technically you're on like this marathon it's not really a run anymore right it's kind of like a long-term marathon where like you might be away for a year two years and then all of a sudden you come back and it's like you never left right and i feel like that's kind of the best way to approach the 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 beat making stuff and just being a music producer is like longevity so what's i want to i want to start here what's like what's keeping you excited about the music thing like you're saying that you know the the landscape of the sound is changing every year um everything is evolving so quickly you have artists coming in artists coming out so what what's like inspiring you what's keeping you excited about hip-hop for me, man, it's just honestly, bro, it's just being in the studio. Like, I, it's funny because like I don't even really listen to a lot of music nowadays. Like, I'm getting, I'm getting close to that age where it's like, you know, it's like, you know, that thing where it's like when you get older, like, you know, you, music doesn't sound as good as it used to, and all this stuff. Like, the prime of my years were enjoyed when I was like, you know, eighteen to like twenty four. Like, I really loved the music. Like, I was really like into into the music that I was into, you know. But now that I'm like, you know, I'm thirty three now, so it's like. I enjoy I enjoy the music I hear today, but it's like, bro, when you become such a such a master of your craft, and I've been making beats for like twenty years, you almost start to like you kinda you're just so damn critical, bro. Like I hear music and I'm like, I would have did this differently. I would have did that differently. Oh, I don't like I don't like those hi hats. Like, bro, you already know. Like that's that's just the process of 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 and the pathway of what we've done. You know what I'm saying? It just happens naturally. But for me, man, I just I just get excited about getting in the studio and just like cooking up fresh music, you know what I mean? Or collaborating with other guys and like hearing, hearing new stuff. But for me, man, I'm just like, yeah. I'm always just looking for like the next wave and the next sound. I'm never, I'm never thinking about like what's happening at the moment. I'm trying to always figure out like, yo, how do we take this to the next level? You know what I'm saying? Amazing. Yeah. And do you think that, and, and I'm so glad that you said that because do, do you, you know, when you were in your younger years, right? Like, you know, when you were 18, 19, 20, do you feel like, having that type of um uh, perspective on music it only comes when you're older or when you're you know in the game for 10 20 years or do you think that having the type of approach you have now with music it is beneficial for someone also just starting out you know um that's that is younger and trying to get in get in the you know the, the the industry do you think it's do you do you think it's important to have that same type of mentality yeah for sure i i think i think it's just a balance man of like being 
being critical, but at the same time being creative and free. You know what I'm saying? And like, it's hard. Like I find that when guys first start out, they're very creative and free and that's how they discover themselves. They discover their sound. And as they get older, they become critical of the sound because it's like, you've been doing it for so long and you become such an expert at your craft that like you start to just like, you know, you know what you like, you know what you love. Like, you know, lately I've been doing these streams and I've been listening, listening to other people's submissions and, you know, I'm so, bro, I'm so critical. Like, like most of the stuff that I'm hearing is like, yeah, it's good. I hear, I hear it being better, but you know, it's not, it's not at the level that I think it should be. So it's like, I'm constantly like, yo, how, how do you, how do you push the boundary? How do you make the illest fucking song or the illest beat? Like, that's always what I'm thinking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love that. And yeah. what you know, speaking yeah. of Twitch, so obviously you guys know T T minus is 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 on Twitch and he's going crazy on there. Um what what are you hearing on there? How's what's the landscape like? Are are you hearing talent? What are you are you hearing like, you know, uh, similarities in some of the beat submissions like what are what are but your definitely, thoughts dude, right of now course, definitely it's always and, and it's so funny man like i don't know again i don't know if it comes with years and wisdom or if it's just for the times now but i'm hearing a lot of like you know the same things like it's either i'm going to hear something that's very drill or i'm going to hear something that's very like you know um trap you know like the with the 808s and like that kind of stuff or or you know or i'm hearing some very moody music that's filtered and you can't hear all the any of the top end like it's it's you know you get a lot of the same stuff and it's and it's rare to hear something that's very unique you know what i'm saying like i you just stumble upon it like i literally go through hundreds of submissions like dude i'm I'm actually sitting down listening to all the submissions you know either sometimes a little before the stream after the stream during the stream so like i'm paying attention man and like you know i i guess i guess it just comes with the experience of just being in the game for so long or just understanding music to a point where it's like you know, you know, this is what this is what to expect from the sound of music today, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's so that's so interesting because it's like, you know, like you said earlier, music is evolving and changing so much, right? It's like it's 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 it, it, it's keeping some of the core foundations, but it's changing in so many different ways. And um you are a great example of of someone who's been able to contribute to it, help help it evolve. But also, you know, when I go back and listen to your catalog and I listen to your other records, it's like those records still sound relevant today, right? And as a music sure. producer of today, when you're doing big records, you're kind of like defining almost the 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 landscape of of hip hop and the landscape of music. So you know how how can a young producer or someone um without as much experience as you how, how can how can you know an upcoming music producer approach that idea of you know how could i come in the game and you know leave my mark or 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 change the sound or do they come in and kind of start getting their feet wet by doing what's popular and then have an That's opportunity to change the sound. You know what I mean? Like what, in your opinion, yeah. like from your experience, what do you think is, is, you know, a, a, a good way to approach that? I think, bro, I think there's a mixture. It's a mixture of all those things. Like, I think everything you said in, in some form of way, I, I, I can relate to in my, in my journey as a music producer, like there was a time when I came in and I was just trying to get my feet wet and I was just trying new things. You know what I mean? I was just like figuring, figuring out my dog and like, what kind of music I wanted to cook up. And then, and I started to emulate other producers like Timbaland or Just Blaze. And like, I wanted to produce like those guys and make beats like those guys. But then somewhere along the line, you know, through my emulation and also just like enjoying what I like, I stumbled upon my own vibe and my own sound. So I think it's just a, a big thing is just like, you know, just, just getting out there and trying, man. I think a lot of guys, I think one, a lot of guys, they don't, they don't just like, jump on their program and just cook up and cook up and cook up and keep 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 making beats and then also i think the big problem is they don't share their music enough you know there's a lot of like basement mm. producers bro like you already know there's guys that are in their basement they don't leave the crib they don't have a network they don't have homies that make beats with them and you know they just make beats for like this for like 10 years and they have the growth of somebody 
who's been making beats for like three years who's out there networking you know what i'm saying because it's like a big part mm. of, a big part of the growth dude is like you know it's 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 the network it's like it's going to the studio it's like me playing my beats for you getting your opinion and then me hearing your beats and hearing what you're doing and being like yo Oh, how did you do that? Like, how did you how did you warp that sample like that? Like, how'd you do that effect? And then yeah. taking a bit of that sauce, applying it to my stuff, and then further growing my sound. You know what I'm saying? And not a lot of guys are doing that, and, I, and you can tell, man. Like, I can always hear when I hear like some new beats or some submissions, and I can tell when the guys are like fresh, bro. Like, I can hear like, oh, you've been making <laughs> these for like months. <laughs> like, you yeah. just know, man, because they're they're very it's experimental, crazy. but they're also their sound selection is just horrendous you know what i'm saying but yeah yeah and i hear you talk about that a lot on your twitch you know i'm you know low-key i'd be in there t minus i'd be in that twitch you guys to shout, watching you, you dog them, man. <laughs> Come on, man. and uh so like what do you what do you think about that you know you talk about like sound selection a lot you know obviously that's you know such a big part of like, like what you do as a music producer and just a creator so like what 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 are what are some things that you learned over the years um in terms of having that ear developing that ear for sound selection is it something that kind of comes natural to you or do you kind of like or did you have to train your ears and yourself to develop you know a certain taste level of of sound selection like what's your approach on that so for me it just i mean when i first got into making beats i wasn't even considering sound selection so i don't i don't fault no producer that's new that's trying to cook up and they're just making ideas and cooking up vibes just you know just freely creating but like eventually you do have to uh you know you have to kind of like create a culture of sound and a culture of like vibe that's like that's just like you know it's it's just the best sounds the best the best instruments the best drums everything you gotta you gotta you gotta be like that because that's really what's going to separate you from like the guys who are amateurs you know what i mean like that in my opinion that's that's really the that's really what separates the big dogs from the little dogs is like how, who has the better sounds who who shit knocks like when we when we listen to like timberland beats especially let's say like early 2000s like justin timberlake nelly Furtado, like that era of timberland those drum sounds were fucking insane and like what and it wasn't just the rhythms like the rhythms were amazing because timberland's bounce is unprecedented but when you when you listen to the sounds and stuff it's like the shit the shit knocks so crazy and it's like yo that's how that's how he stood out at the time it's like yo he was the goat at that time you know what i mean but like i said yeah. man it's, it's 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 important it's an important part but i think it's something that you that you learn you learn over time you know what i'm saying like for me i just learned how to train my ear to pick the right sounds and it's you know, it's just all about what what feels right, man. For me, you know what I'm saying. And, and I have this conversation with a lot of the a lot of other producers because it's like it's so important, man. It's so it's so important to the whole process. It's really yeah, producing because because produ producing is essentially you're picking. You know, a classic producer from the '70s is picking like you know the right uh, drum set with the right bass guitar and the right um, keyboard, and they're blending it all together, and it, it all fits right. So it's like you're essentially doing the same thing, except you're doing it in a DAW and you're picking, you know, again, the right sounds that go together. Yeah, exactly. And, and also, you know, the, um, back then they were just choosing like a loop, right? It's like when, when you go through, like you hear like a seventies, like classic rock song and like the whole right. thing's cheesy. And then like you get to the bridge and it's like, Oh, sh Oh shit. Like I want to loop that. And, 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 and what I learned is, the reason why it makes you stop and record and loop it is because the the like you said the sound selection the texture of those guitars and like that little short delay that they put through the tape machine made you know the the b3 organ sound mm -hmm. insane you know for you to want to loop it and sample it so yeah you're absolutely right man the, i think it's something you develop over time right um so you know going back to to timbo right and timbo you're talking about like the rhythm and sound selection so i think people sort of get confused and they think you know a, a good beat is a beat that has like a complex rhythm and then other people are like you know mm -hmm. a good beat is 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 you know 
uh, a simple rhythm, but with really amazing textures, right? And then you right. have other beats that just have uh, so much going on, like beat battle shit with the air drums and you know, <laughs> yeah. a million things happening. You know, that stuff that we love as like like producer nerds um, that are just really confusing to listen to, right, for the everyday person. So right. when you're making beats, do you, how much of a focus do you have on drum patterns and rhythm and bounce and how much of a focus do you have on, like I said, like actual drum selection, texture, or, or do you think it's like this happy balance or marriage between both of those things? I think it's, yeah, exactly that. I think it's, I think it's just a marriage, right? Like, I think a big part of it is, you know, it's, I, I, you know, you were saying, you said you had a point, you said earlier, like, is it, uh, you know, a complex rhythm or is it just really simple a simple beat with dope drum sounds and i thought to myself like honestly you 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 can get more done with a simple drum pattern that has sick that has crazy sounds than you would vice versa because when you hear that that rhythm and like and 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 you know you you've had submissions you get submissions all the time and you, you hear a beat right with a with a interesting rhythm but the drum sounds are trash you immediately are just like bro like this is some mediocre <laughs> shit. Like you yeah, immediately, yeah. your mind goes there because your mind ties the this the sonic experience to like the level of producer that this person is. You know what I'm saying? So like that's why I'm a huge yeah. I'm a huge believer of like if the sounds are right. I mean, it really it does matter. Obviously the rhythm, but like you can switch up the rhythm any different way, but it's always gonna feel really good because it's like it's all about just palette and texture. Like what? How does it feel when you hear it? You know. Like, I don't know, for me, at least. But rhythm is important, you know, 100%, like, big part of it. But I guess for me, I've, I've, I've trained up for so long that rhythm is just, like, second nature. But at the same time, like, yeah. picking sounds takes a lot longer to develop, you know what I'm saying? Which, which yeah. takes you to that level, that next level, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. And it's so crazy because everything we're talking about, it, it, like, always all seems to just go back to sound selection at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, it's like take the time to develop your ear enough so that you can develop uh, or you can choose the right sounds and textures. And then from there, you know, the better you get, the better your beats get, really, at the end of the day, right? Facts, facts. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Um, so, you know, I, a lot of people want to know this, and I'm sure you've talked about this probably on Twitch or on interviews, but, um, you know, being in the studio with, with Jermaine, with Cole, um, he's a real producer as well. So it's like, yeah. is is there any cool, like, um, moments or experiences that you had with him, making beats with him or playing him beats that, that you, you know, that prior to going in the studio with Cole that you didn't think would know would like happen or or be a thing because he's 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 a big thinker and he he's actually a really good producer so you know is there any like producer nerdy things that you can share any stories with cole i mean you know i i can't really think of any particular story off the top of my head but i will say like we both have very opposite perspectives on production you know what i mean wow. approaches like and i think that's why we work so well because his approach is like you know, and I learned some really cool gems from him is, is, is just like cook, just cook up anything like quickly, like do something in like 10 minutes, like make a, make a seven minute beat, 10 minute beat, like really, really quickly, <laughs> just do something fast. Whereas my approach is like, take your time, find the right sounds. And, you know, I, I, I'll cut off the beat, maybe like 40 to 40 minutes to an hour, 30 minutes to an hour. Let's say I'll stop cooking up a beat and like take a break. Cause you know, that ear fatigue kicks in and you start to overthink the whole process. But with Cole, he's like, yo, like, just throw paint on the wall and like see where it goes. So I, I like, I, I've learned a lot mm -hmm. from that, you know what I'm saying? From his perspective, because I started to do a little bit of both because, and, and he actually kind of shared with me, like he told me like, you know, your sound selection is already so good that like, bro, if you cook up a beat fast, you're already going to pick the right sounds. You just don't, you're not realizing it that like wow. I'm being picky on top of my picky mind already kind of thing. Yeah. So, but so he, he also taught you little, he, he learned, yeah yeah so but also to the point though he also learned some things about sound selection from me as well like in picking mm. drums and you know it's important for his process now too that really is the perfect marriage because it's like he in a way kind of taught you to not to 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 not like overthink as much maybe and Hell to just yeah. like throw paint on the wall and he's learning he learned from you that you know taking the time to go through sounds and 
and and and you know go through textures could also give you another a different result too and it's crazy because now that i think about it it's like no no one or two process is better than the other right like his process right. is is amazing and that's a great philosophy but yours is as well so i think it comes down to like what the producer is comfortable with and what they can do to get the like the best result right for sure um, i think it's so i love that you know what i'm saying I think it's bad. Yeah, like, it's almost. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What are you say? Go, I was just gonna say it's almost like this painting up here, right? This is Gustav Klimt, and he is known for like taking his time with paintings. And then you have a guy like Jackson Pollock, who like literally, like what you just said, T minus, like he literally takes random paint colors and he splashes them on the wall, and all of his paintings look like a complete mess, just like random like strokes and colors and textures uh, but he that was his signature and that was he that's what he was known for and he used to put those paintings together in like less than you know 10 15 minutes and they would eventually go on to sell for millions of dollars um but i guess the point is kind of it's similar to that where no one or two process is better or worse it's just like pick a pick a process and go with it and see what happens right right i mean from yeah. my, even my process is kind of like I'll start to be, I'll try to make it be as quick as possible, but then I'm always, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of like leaving, leaving what you do like on the table and then coming back to it later and coming back mm. with that super like, you know, objective, like, you know, you're hearing it almost like it's, it's new, it's like new music. So it's like when I, when I come into the, when I come into the, um, back into the studio and I listen back to what I did, maybe like, let's say, let's say six hours to like a day later, all of a sudden I'm hearing everything that I don't like. And I like <laughs> about what I just created. So it's like, then what I'll do is like, based on, you know, I, I already got the idea out. So then I'll start like replacing sounds like, like, okay, this kick sucked. I don't, the moment I heard the beat drop, I hated how the kick hit. I didn't like, I didn't like how it hit. So <laughs> let me replace that. Or I feel like the tempo could have been faster. So like I'll make these like, second adjustments and i don't and i and i try not to like make a beat and then bounce it right away to like send to an artist because i 90 percent of the time i regret doing it <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> you know yeah. you said something so you said something really great on twitch one day i was watching and you were like um you were like yeah my basically my process is that like i'll just I'll just keep doing stuff and like I hate everything and then I'll just do it until I don't hate it anymore. Yeah. And exactly. that's such like a that's so crucial cuz it's like that's true. It's like, you know, if you put a melody together, you load up like a, you know, default like general MIDI piano that's like got the right. worst texture. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. you like put a melody together and it's like you like you you keep going until you like it more and more and more until the point where you 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 love it, right? And you don't hate it. Um, and I think every most things we start we hate until we don't anymore. So that, that I thought that was like a dope gem. Yeah, it's weird. It's a it sounds a, mad jaded and like critical, but it's like it just works for me, man. It's like, true. That's, that's how I work, man. I work really, I work, re, I work really well like that. You know what I'm saying? So no, it's it's actually true. I mean, we all do it. You know, yeah. it's you. We we don't we we technically don't know what we're doing. We just kind of mm. like. It's, it has to do a little bit with what Cole said. It's like, we just like have a thing, we try it. And like, we, a lot of times we hate it until like we hear a sound that we love and it's like, oh shit, that's the one. And then you kind of go with that one, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, all right. So, uh, let's do a little Q and a, and then we can like walk around a little bit. So we have lyric, Alex, HMZ is here. Um, we'll start with lyric lyric. Do you have a, a question or anything you want, um, to pick T minus his brain on? Absolutely. Uh, one of my first questions I wanted to ask was when you were when you were just like kind of getting into the, the fun part of producing where was there like a, a point where you're trying to do like. Physical simps and trying to mess with drum machines or you just stayed on your laptop, most likely. Uh, keep me so, sorry, ask that question again, bro. I, I could barely hear you. Oh, no problem. Uh, can you hear me better now? You just got to be closer to the mic. Yeah, let me hear you. OK. Um, I know one thing you can do. Also, you can. You turn sound your further phone. away. You sound. You sound further away. <laughs> you know oh, you know what? Come closer. Come closer. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Come closer in the room. Yeah. There you yeah, go. No, there you go. Okay. When when you first started producing, or even not even first started producing, but was there a point that you started to like want to branch out into actual physical synths and drum machines, and then you had to kind of go back into what you were 
you know more comfortable with or did you always stay just working with vsts i like i like i'm a soft sense kind of guy like i like working in the box i, lo- I love i love cooking up on the computer like for me there's not a that, there's not that many limitations i i do enjoy though like like you know a, a cool piece of gear and like being in a studio and and cooking up with a synth just every once in a while it's kind of like a treat you know what i'm saying but for the the most part man like i love like i'm always i've always been a computer guy like i've always like i'm like a computer nerd like i used to build computers and like um i used to be into like wanting to be like a program designer or you know what i mean like all this other like a programmer like even like a not even like a program designer i mean like a like an animator like do uh illustration on the computer and stuff like that so like i've always been like into computers so for me I, that's just where my home is and i work really really fast like if if I if if I wasn't if, you know if you watch my stream and you see me cook up like I'm usually very conscious about my speed I try not to go too fast because I'll lose people's you know attention that way so but yeah man I, I, I'm 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 PC all the way computer all the way that's good to awesome know. so like do you do you also in that same response do you collect like a lot of different VSTs and kind of like mess with some of those like real low key ones or you stick to like your basics. No, no, no. I got, there's lots of low key ones I use. Like there's, there's little hidden gems that I use. I like to use sounds that not a lot of people are really tapping into. And again, that's just me being the computer nerd, like always on the computer, like finding new shit. Like I'll go to, I'll go on like kvraudio.com and like look at the more recent like plugins that they have and, and just like just click through websites after website and just see like, okay, this is something new. You know what I mean? And pull out a plugin and then start using that. You know what I'm saying? And then find something else. I, I get like, the thing is for me too, like I get like super uninspired if I have the, if I use the same sounds. So I need to like constantly look for new stuff. Mm, really appreciate Love that. it. Really appreciate that. No yeah. Problem, the computer man. back, the computer background makes like a huge difference. Right. Cause it's like, <laughs> it's kind of like naturally part of the whole process. Like just yeah, sure. programming, Definitely. being on the computer. Yeah. It's fire. Or if you just um, like hardware, like some guys, they, they love hardware, yeah. right? Like, and and that's and that's the thing. Like they have tons of synths and all that stuff, and like they buy all these really crazy old school things. And I'm like, I'm like, yo, oh, I I I personally, that's not my thing because I don't like to, I don't like doing the whole routing process half the time, like running cables through and getting oh, like I hate I, that shit. And like and like and the MIDI shit to me is easier because it's like I can play something out in MIDI and it's like boom, it's like it's right there. I can edit, I can adjust yeah. it because I don't really play keys. I'm more so just I click everything in and then adjust from there. So. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm definitely with you on that. Um, Alex, do you have uh, any anything, any questions, or anything you want to ask T-minus? You can come yeah, closer. You I'm can come closer to too. Me. You can uh, you can uh, go ahead and and navigate over here a little bit closer so we can hear. Oh, okay. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. Yep, you're good. Yeah. Okay. Firstly, T-minus, it's a big honor to meet you. I'm a big fan. Thank you. <laughs> um. Right, so I have a question about the music industry and its emphasis on, I guess, like grind culture and hustling 24-7 because I see a lot of um, like motivational speakers and producers like tweeting about this stuff. So do you or have you ever, when you were coming up as a producer, did you ever feel the constant pressure to constantly be working? Like did you ever have work guilt when you took a break? Yeah, I mean, I still do sometimes, to be honest. Like, I, you know, like, you know, my I'm now that I'm much older. Like, my life has gone like real. Like, I have kids. Like, I'm in a relationship. Like, I have a house to take care of. Like, it's is I'm like I'm I'm on some real dad, grown man shit. So it's like there's moments where it's like I don't want to cook up in the studio, or I can't really. Like, it's just you know my time is kind of divided. So I do get those moments of like guilt. Like, oh man, I'm not having cooked up in a few days. You know what I'm saying? But it's always good. Like, I think, I think there should be a balance. Like people should always take care of their mental health, man. Like first. And if you feel like you're overworking yourself, you've got to pull back a little bit. Cause I see a lot of guys like in the industry, like they'll, they'll literally sleep at the studio. And like, that's some, that's some young boy shit. Like you, you, you can't be doing that <laughs> shit when you're a grown ass man. And like, like, you're getting old. Like you gotta, like, you gotta take care of yourself always. You know what I'm saying? Whether you're young and old, but I'm, um, you know, to your point, though, like I, I do, I do sometimes go through this like kind of guilt phase, like yo, I haven't cooked up or I haven't sent out beats in a while, and like I'll even tell my girl like, yo, I need to send out tracks, yo, I haven't done this in a while, like, and she'll be like, yo, go like make it a day to send out tracks. So 
that might be the goal for the day. Because half the time, like, you can be in the studio cooking up, and that's really good. But it's like, if no one's hearing your music, then it's almost like you never fucking cooked up. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. to the world. So, Love there's it. that aspect. And then also, too, like, I'm a big believer. Like, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So, like, if you're not cooking up, you're also, like, you're not growing. And, in, in, you know, you're not a... Uh, I feel like if you take too much time away, if you're not doing it as often as you need to, you kind of like get into a creative slump. It's kind of like a mix. It's like a balance though. Cause if you do it too much, then you also get into like a creative slump eventually, right? You get that beat block. So balance and really it's just balance. I feel like this is like, that's like the, the whole uh, point of this whole like interview. It's just, yeah. Everything's about balance. You know what I'm saying? So true. Alex, I love that question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank that was you. a good question. Um, and also, yeah. you spoke about um, sometimes if you take too much time away, you can fall into that creative slump and you just you don't know what to do. Um, what are some of your strategies or, like, coping mechanisms to combat that? I mean, you know, for me, it's just throwing paint on the wall. Again, like, I just, I just open up the door. And, like, half the time, like, you know, I mean, let me – how can I phrase this? I always – I always tell people that motivation is one of those things where it's like, you got to just get up and do it. You know what I'm saying? In order to like, yeah. to make it happen, to, to get that motivation. So it's like, you could, you could sit there and like in front of your dog and like, be like, Oh, I don't know what to do. But it's like, as long as you, as soon as you just like grab a couple ideas, find a dope sample is this, it's going to inspire you. You know what I'm saying? You just have to, yeah. you just have to be conscious of that and like not wait for the, for the music to come to you. Sometimes you have to go after it. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people, a lot of people don't think they do that. Like they wait, like, Oh, I don't have any ideas. I don't know what to cook up. And, and, you know, I even go through that sometimes too, but what I try to do to combat that is I'll just go through songs or go through samples, pull out sounds, throw them in my dog, try and cook up something. Like, even if it's just, just for fun, like it's like the little, yeah. it's almost like the little joys of just like, like, like those little moments of like, okay, this is cool. They end up amounting to something bigger. Once you get, once you get through like, you know, most, most of that track or most of that beat, like, you know, a lot of times people are waiting for that, like, aha moment right away, but it's like, it won't, it doesn't usually happen like that. It always happens like in, in the mix of what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? Like when you're cooking up, like, you know, you find a cool sound. Oh yeah, cool. This is cool. You find another cool sound. And all of a sudden it's like, yo, you stumble upon something like, oh shit, that's that aha moment that you're really looking for. And, and what's driving you to even start making beats. But a lot of times people forget that like that moment only comes like it usually comes when you're like in the process you know what i'm saying so i always tell people like just, i love just, that just try it yeah Start i love it. that like finding it fi yeah like finding it while you're in the process and in order to be in the process you just have to make time to do it and the more you do it the more mm. opportunities right to tap into that process but at the same time like Again, going back to balance, like, you know, what Alex was saying um, or what Alex asked earlier, how do you balance the two and not get burnt out or feel like you're not working enough? And, yeah, I think you made a great point. Like, I think it just at the end of the day, you just have to, like, trust your inner voice as well, right? Like, you'll know when you're burnt out. You'll know when yeah. you're not excited to do something or you're, you know, you are excited to do something, right? And And for me, right. at least, like... I feel like that's kind of what we what we kind of learn along the process is like there's certain things that excite us and there's certain things that don't right it's like a it's like getting that text message from that friend and you see it and you're either like you're either like oh amazing like I'm so glad to hear from this person or you see it and you're like fuck I don't want to reply to this <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, and so I like, that. I think that's a big, right? It's not, I think I feel like that's a big part of it too. It's like, w what's exciting and what isn't. And you know, I, I think doing more of the exciting stuff is like kind of the goal, right? Yeah. 